Uh, hello. Can you all hear me? Do I need to be really near, or can I be near? Tell me, tell me when. When? 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 when. <laughs> I'll be quite near the microphone. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Very nice to meet some of you uh, today. Actually, some of your faces, I, I remember some of you from yesterday. So, hi again. <laughs> uh, as mentioned before, uh, I work for the East Asia Assessment Solutions team for the British Council. Uh, I'm based in Beijing, in China. Uh, and I'm very happy to be back in Vietnam again. I was in Ho Chi Minh uh, in August. Um, tomorrow, I'm really looking forward to walking around Hanoi. Later, I hope you can tell me some places where I should go, okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, before I begin today's presentation, I'd like to play a little game with you. Uh, in a moment, I want you to have a look at the screen, and I want you to see how many people you can find. Okay? Are you ready? I'll give you 30 seconds. There's an easy one at the top. You should all get that one. <laughs> Five seconds. I have no prize. <laughs> okay. How many did you get? Five? Not bad. There are ten. Uh, well done, if you got if you got three, that's not great. Five's okay. <laughs> uh, all of these people today are important for my presentation. Uh, today we'll be looking at some of the important people who are involved with or interested in the life cycle of a test. In particular, we will focus on a group of stakeholders who play a vital role in helping students succeed in high-stakes tests. Of course, I'm talking about you, teachers, yes. Uh, this presentation, it looks at the teacher's role in the overall test cycle and also considers what knowledge teachers need to know about assessment in order to have a beneficial impact on their students' learning. I hope you find it useful. Uh, let's start today by looking at the life cycle of a test. A life cycle for a test, whether it's a, a large-scale international test or a small-scale classroom one, consists of several key stages. We start off by designing and developing the test, where we uh, define the construct of the test, we produce test specifications, and create and trial sample test materials. Uh, when we know the test is ready to go, we, we deliver the test to real candidates, these candidates will probably need some time to uh, study and prepare for the test. Some may need longer than others. Uh, and finally, once the test has finished, we need to think about how the test scores uh, will be interpreted and used. And throughout this whole cycle, there are people who can affect the test validity at different stages in the cycle, uh, from construct definition to test use. These people are referred to as stakeholders. 
A stakeholder is a person whose interest should be taken into consideration when designing a test. Uh, they are the test designers, the teachers, the students, the score users, governments maybe, uh, or any other individual or group that has an interest in how the scores are used and whether they are useful in a given context. Um, some of you may be familiar with uh, an, an assessment expert called uh, Bernard Spolsky's. And if you do know this guy, you may be familiar with his uh, warning of use with care in relation to tests. Um, he compares the testing industry to the pharmaceutical, the, the creative medicine industry, where everyone involved with a certain type of drug or medicine has a very important role to play, whether that be the researcher, the doctor, the chemist, the pharmacist, or the patient. Um, each and every stakeholder needs understanding of the product and how to use it so they can do it, or they can do what it was designed to do, and most importantly, so that it does no harm. Clearly though, the patient, for example, might not need the same amount of information as researchers developing the medicine. Uh, and that knowledge will be different to the knowledge needed by a doctor who prescribes the drug. So this brings us to the questions of what knowledge do stakeholders in testing need to know? And do they need the same type and level of knowledge as everybody else. So let's look at some examples of stakeholders then. Um, let's begin with um, a test taker. Uh, a test taker, for example, needs to know uh, what the test looks like, uh, how long it'll take, and how they can achieve a high score. Uh, and perhaps may also need some relaxation strategies on the actual test day. Uh, who else do we have? We have parents. These can be considered as stakeholders. Uh, parents may want to know what the test scores mean and if it indicates their child is performing well or maybe not so well at school. Uh, we have item writers the test writers who write the questions, they'll need to know uh, a lot of details about the test, the test specifications, covering details such as who the test is aimed at, um, what its purpose is, uh, what content is to be covered, and what types of questions should be used in that test. There are more questions than just multiple choice questions, remember this. Um, we also have university administrators. Um, they should have an understanding of how to interpret and use language test scores uh, so this can help them make admissions decisions. <laughs> Maybe the wrong pitch, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we, we have examiners as well, or raters. Uh, they need to be familiar with the scoring criteria of the test, as well as knowing how to scare, oh, I mean comfort, the test taker. Uh, uh, and finally, we have the teacher. Uh, teachers need to know everything, probably. Uh, perhaps most importantly, how to prepare their students for a test, uh, and give meaningful feedback and support once the test results are back. In order for different stakeholders to perform well in their individual duties and responsibilities, it is clearly important for them to be knowledgeable in language assessment and testing. And this is where language assessment literacy, or LAL, uh, comes into play. 
LAL is present when a person possesses the assessment-related knowledge and skills needed for the competent performance of that person's responsibilities. Just have a think of that definition. I also think uh, two gentlemen, Pill and Harding, uh, they, they define the LAL concept quite neatly as well by saying language assessment literacy may be understood as indicating a repertoire of competencies that enable an individual to understand, evaluate, and in some cases, create language tests and analyze test data. It covers quite a few things. So, specifically for teachers, language assessment literacy is knowing how to choose and develop assessment methods appropriate for purpose. It's knowing how to administer, score and interpret results of externally produced or maybe teacher produced assessment methods. Tests are just one example, but there's other methods we can use. Uh, it's about knowing how to use assessment results when making decisions uh, about individual students, or about making decisions concerning planning teaching, or even developing the curriculum. And it's also knowing how to communicate assessment results to students, uh, parents, and other stakeholders. In other words, LAL is knowing how to assess what students know and can do in regard to establishing learning targets, uh, analyzing and interpreting the results of these assessments, and applying these results to teaching, learning, and assessment activities. Yeah, I, I agree. I think teachers should all definitely get paid more. <laughs> we have a lot of responsibilities. So, who benefits from teachers being knowledgeable about language assessment and literacy? Absolutely, definitely, without a doubt, it's the learners. Your students benefit by far the most. Uh, teachers who are able to assess progress and give good feedback will help learners achieve their learning goals. Uh, there have also been links made between the quality of teachers' classroom assessments and students' achievements in standardised tests. Uh, research shows that effective formative assessment, which we'll be talking more about today, is one of the most important con uh, contributors to success in summative assessment. Uh, this is because learners uh, have a clear idea of what good work should look like and what they need to do to reach a particular standard. Uh, I think a guy called Crusan, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, um, I think he best sums it up when he said that the consequences of uninformed assessment can be losses for students in time, money, motivation and confidence. Pretty serious stakes, really. Unfortunately, there is a dark side to language assessment uh, literacy. This was mentioned earlier today, actually, uh, but according to uh, someone called Stiggins, teachers spend from around one-third to one-half of their time in the classroom on assessment-related activities. However, there are also claims that many teachers know little about educational assessment. It is therefore clear that, though important, the theory and practice of assessment has been kind of neglected in teacher training programs. I'm not sure if you agree with that, but there's been quite a bit of research looking into this. Uh, and moreover, some teachers report that they lack the resources, the time or the money, uh, to engage effectively with assessment, and, surprisingly, uh, that they actually feel afraid of assessment. Which is weird, because I always thought it was the students 
who should be afraid of assessment. But no, many teachers report that they're quite scared at doing this, possibly because of uh, previous experience when they were young, or possibly because of a lack of knowledge in uh, assessment and testing. All of this suggests a need to explore teachers' engagement with assessment more fully and develop strategies to support teachers' knowledge, skills, and confidence in this area. The rest of my presentation today concerns uh, a study that some of my colleagues in the British Council did to generate language assessment knowledge profiles of EAP teachers based in East Asia. Uh, the purpose of this study was to find out what teachers in the region would like to know about assessment and testing. Uh, in the hope that eventually we could design some training materials to be used in future language testing programs. Uh, the study itself was conducted in China and we focused on a diverse range of teachers who all of them were preparing their students for IELTS. At the moment, and I'm sure it's similar in Vietnam, IELTS is huge in China. Uh, out of the three and a half million tests taken last year globally, uh, China makes a really, really big part of this. Um, test takers in China, they can take the test in 43 different kinds of cities. And in every one of those cities, there are schools devoted to helping students achieve a high score. Uh, the pressure to do well in IELTS is felt not just by the students, but also by the teachers. In private language centres, students or their parents expect to get what they are paying for, namely exam success. A lot of pressure involved. Um, the average score for the academic paper in China from the latest information we have is 5.76. A little bit lower than Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, with students performing stronger in the reading and listening sections than the speaking and writing ones. And I think perhaps that's quite similar in, in many countries in East Asia. Uh, this perhaps indicates that a different approach to teaching the productive skills in China is needed. The study that we did consisted of two parts. Um, in stage one, we conducted workshops in cities across China that allowed us to firstly introduce IELTS teachers to the concept of language assessment literacy, uh, presenting various assessment related terms and theories. The workshops also had structured discussion phases where we could better understand uh, the importance of LAL for teachers and explore which areas of practice they would like to know more about. Uh, this acted as our first data gathering point. Uh, 102 IELTS teachers took part in these workshops, like I said, from different cities, big cities and smaller ones. And these teachers who took part, they had varying degrees of teaching experience and IELTS knowledge. So a good mix, basically. The workshop discussions, they centered around three main questions. Uh, number one, how do you come into contact with the test as a teacher? Uh, number two, what actions do you take that could influence the outcome of the learning and testing process? And uh, number three, what knowledge do you need to positively influence the outcome of the learning and testing process? And some of the responses, which I'll show you in a minute, were, were quite interesting. Um, for the first question, how do you come into contact with a test as a teacher? Uh, here are some of the responses. 
Uh, many of the answers are what you would expect. I was quite surprised to see that some teachers said accompanying students to the test. What a dedicated teacher. Though personally, I think it would terrify me if I was doing an exam and the teacher was looking through the window at me. <laughs> anyway. Up for the second question, what actions do you take that could influence the outcome of the learning and testing process? Um, we broke down the answers into uh, positive and, and negative responses. Uh, for the positive responses, we, we got a lot of uh, replies. It was good to see that teachers were aware of the importance, for example, of encouragement, clear lesson aims, and test familiarity. On a more worrying side, it's interesting to note they deemed um, doing lots of past papers as a positive influence. Um, but perhaps that's a debate for another speech, maybe not now. As for negative influences, uh, many teachers pointed out the dangers of providing incorrect information and bad test-taking strategies to test takers. We had a lot of responses based on that. Uh, <laughs> Some of the examples they give of uh, bad information included uh, you should go to another country to achieve a higher score. Yeah. Or you should speak with a British accent in the speaking test. There are some teachers who tell students this, they will get a higher score. Yeah. We even had some teachers say uh, to the girls, uh, wear a short skirt and some makeup to impress the examiner. I can promise you only one of these is true. I mean, none of these are true. <laughs> uh, for the third question, uh, what information and knowledge do you need to positively influence the outcome of the learning and testing process? Uh, a wide range of responses were collected. Uh, a quick reminder for the first one, when we talk about test construct, we're talking about the specific skills and abilities that the test is actually testing. Uh, if not already stated, you can usually work out what the constructs are by looking at individual test tasks, uh, as well as the scoring criteria of the uh, test. Good indicators for you. The answers we got to this question, they were the basis for stage two of the study. Uh, in the second stage of the study, we sent out a questionnaire to IELTS teachers uh, from two uh, different universities in China. Uh, sadly, only 21 teachers replied, hmm, maybe we needed to give them something possibly, I don't know. Uh, only 21 teachers. Uh, the questionnaire asked participants, what degree of knowledge do you need to positively influence the outcome of the learning and testing process in each of the following 10 areas? And those 10 areas mentioned were the 10 responses we got from the third question in the discussion in the workshops. And here they are. So for each area or concept, the participant could respond with the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. If the teacher chose 0, it meant they believe teachers don't need to know this particular area. Uh, 1 meant teachers should be able to recognize this as something related to their job. Uh, 2 was teachers should know what this means, but don't really need to use it in their job. Uh, three, stuff that teachers need to understand this and use the knowledge and practice in their job. And finally, four, teachers need to have in-depth understanding of this concept, and it should consistently inform how they approach their work. And here are the results. If anyone's taking IELTS, writing task one, this is good practice. What, what are the key features? Go. 
Uh, let me try and summarize these results using uh, some visuals. Uh, from the results, all participants who responded felt that all teachers should at least be able to recognize every area as something related to their job. In other words, nobody gave a score of zero for anything. And the majority of respondents also felt that teachers needed to have an in-depth knowledge of these 10 concepts. In talking about the need to have uh, in-depth knowledge of these concepts, the ones with the most votes in this area were test construct, test requirements, assessment criteria, and test taking strategies. This would indicate that these concepts are perhaps considered the most important ones teachers would like to know more about when preparing their students for their tests. There are only three areas where in-depth understanding does not take the top score. Cross-cultural communication, test recognition, and test administration. This would indicate that these concepts are perhaps, are perhaps not considered so important for teachers in China when preparing their students for a test. Give me one second, my computer's trying to die on me. Uh, anyway, here, don't die on me, computer. <laughs> uh, here are our next steps for the future. Uh, this research is only the beginning, uh, and it would be nice to gather more data, a lot more data, uh, from teachers across East Asia. Uh, I hope our next bit of research is done in Vietnam. I've been to Ho Chi Minh, I've been to Hanoi, hopefully a different place I can come. Uh, it would also be helpful to generate information concerning teachers' strengths and weaknesses in the key LAL areas. The intention of this study was to create LAL profiles for teachers in East Asia that could then inform the design and construction of training materials that can be used in language testing programs across the region. And the British Council, they, they do already have a number of resources uh, to address the needs of teachers and other stakeholders who want to know more about different aspects of assessment. I'm going to introduce a couple of these now to you uh, very quickly. Uh, first of all, the, the British Council's Language Assessment Literacy Project uh, provides information and training for anyone who is interested in issues of language assessment. Uh, as part of this project, uh, a selection of animated videos with accompanying transcripts and worksheets, they've been produced. They're all free to access, you don't need to pay anything, and all these materials you can find uh, online on this website. Take a photo, I'll very quickly write it down. Very, very useful. 